Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, I have a special guest, a friend, a colleague, and drummer extraordinaire, Thomas Palazowicz. Welcome to the show, Thomas. Hi, welcome. <laughs> so Thomas is a colleague of mine over at Sick Drummer Magazine, but he's also a multi-talented drummer active in many bands and studio projects. So Thomas, how old were you when you actually started playing drums? Uh, my first contact with drums was when I was about 13. Uh, my first drum set that I owned was when I was about 15. And then it was a few years of experimentation and fun. I didn't really get serious until I was, I want to say, 18. Mm -hmm. And when did you start playing around it? Now, you know, you moved here from Poland, so I'm assuming once you got here as Poland, you were probably like a young teenager or whatever. So most of your experience playing in bands, I'm going to assume, was over here in the United States, unless you were some kind of freaking prodigy and played in some band at 11 years old in Poland. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, actually, I came over here in 89. I was about 13. Mm -hmm. And, yes, all my uh, musical projects were here. Although, not these days, uh, we'll get to it later on in an interview, but uh, I do work with uh, overseas bands these days, especially a couple of uh, projects in Poland. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely get back to that. But before we go that far in time, what were some, what were some of the first bands that you were in once you moved to Chicago and started actually playing out there with bands? Well, my very, very first band was uh, back in high school, and it was uh, kind of Megadeth, Metallica-inspired thrash. Uh, it was called Cerebrum. Mm -hmm. uh, that lasted a couple of months, and then I uh, joined this... Uh, I, th I think you can classify it as black doom metal mm -hmm. uh, it was called poem of creation which later on changed the lineup and became uh, a band called ad infinitum mm -hmm. which we actually that was the my first official recording a demo with those guys and did you what was the first band that you actually started doing shows with uh, it was the center. How old were you? How old were you when you started doing that kind of stuff? I think I was about twenty when I joined the center. Okay, so till then, tell us a little bit about the center because now here's a band that a lot of us know about. You guys put out quite a few uh, albums and EPs, demos and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit about that band and some of your experiences with them. So I joined the center, I want to say, in the middle of uh, 1999, mm -hmm. and uh, soon after that, I uh, went in the studio, which was my first studio experience, and recorded, uh, like a professional studio experience, recorded an EP called uh, Beauty of Suffering. Uh, soon after that, uh, not even a year later, I uh, recorded another demo, uh, War Machine, it was called, and the uh, first official album that I did was Welcome to Oblivion, which came out in year 2000. So you did quite a bit with those guys, so... And this is where your your career, it's just so much, Tom, is it so hard to keep up with. So you're doing the center, and then you left, I guess, and then it's like you picked up right again with something else. What did you do after the center? Well, during the Dissenter years, uh, we basically put out an album every two years. Right. There was, mm -hmm. Year 2006. I started this, um, I want to say, s mathematical, really technical uh, death metal called Corphagy. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did a split with Unmerciful and a couple of other bands. But at that time, it seems like, it seemed like not too many people got that kind of music. It was really out there. So... Um, the album actually came out 
years after its recording actually came out last year officially. And um, so that was in 2006. Also in 2006, um, I joined Gorgasm. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm sorry. I recorded with Gorgasm in 2006. Uh, joined about a year prior to that. And uh, did extensive touring and a couple of demos with uh, Gorgasm um, for about four years we were together. Mm -hmm. Now, was Gorgasm the first band that you did extensive touring with? Uh, no, actually we did some touring with uh, the center. We did okay. a couple of European tours, mm -hmm. and, but Gorgasm was probably the most touring I ever did with that, anyone. So when you first started touring with Dissenter then, Thomas, what was that like for you then doing your first tour outside of the United States? Oh, it was amazing. It was uh, still to this day one of the best experiences of my life. It was a uh, three-week-long tour with Grave and... Uh, another Swedish band, The Forsaken. Mm -hmm. And it was just instant brotherhood. It was just a great time. Um, what else can I say? <laughs> you know, it was it was fun to be there every moment of the tour. Mm -hmm. And you know, getting back to Corfugy now, when you guys joined them and you were talking about the band now, I understand what you're saying. So this is what, in 2006 then you started with them? Uh, in 2006, we put out a, uh, we recorded an album. Okay. We're active probably since 2005. Okay, and like you were saying, it's a different kind of music. Uh, you got a saxophone, kind of jazzy stuff in there. It's, I actually kind of like it. I even like listening to it more so now with all the oversaturation of death metal and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a little refreshing uh, thing to go back to. But speaking of it, so what were the early days like with Corfugy? <laughs> Corfugy is basically was inspired. Um, me and uh, the guitarist sat down, and we are huge Star Wars <laughs> freaks, nerds. <laughs> and, uh, we're like, let's just uh, play Star Wars metal, something <laughs> that's you know that's just going to be really broke blocks, have all different kinds of weird samples and. Uh, keyboards that you would not expect to be there, you know, jazz influence, like you mentioned, saxophone, like, you know, I figured, why do a uh, guitar solo where we can maybe try a saxophone solo, you know, <laughs> and uh, so it was basically like a limitless fun mm -hmm. at that time with no boundaries, and, you know, unfortunately at that time, not too many people understood that, and, um, it's funny that you say that you enjoy he uh, listening to it more now with the oversaturation because uh, it seems like uh, we felt like that, you know, back in 2006 when uh, <laughs> we were recording it. We're like, God, let's just try something that hasn't been done. <laughs> and you did it. <laughs> yeah, so uh seems like uh, 10 years Plus, later, people still enjoy that record very much. Absolutely. So now tell us what's going on with the band now. Uh, as you might have heard earlier this year, there was a tragedy involving our uh, founder, mm -hmm. um, you know, co-founder, of course, G. Tom. He uh, was hit and run. Uh, he died in a hit and run car accident, basically not too far away from my house. And uh, Corfugy was basically non-existing for the last eight years or so. Mm -hmm. And this brought us together to play a tribute show for Tom. And uh, Damien Lesky from, you know, a good friend of mine from Gorgasm and Broken Hope and uh, a few other projects um, stepped in and we did the show 
we had fun, we had great response from people, and decided to resurrect Corfuji. So we've been writing some new music the last couple of months. So we'll see what happens, but it's, uh, it's on again. And you guys got a big show coming up with them, right, pretty soon? Correct. We're uh, uh, supporting, and I believe it's uh, October 15th that we're uh, supporting the Polish grind legend Squash Bowls. Mm hmm. That's going to be a very good show. Um, so, yes, we're working on the live set to uh, do the justice to the show. Now, somewhere along the lines, too, I read in your ex extensive biography <laughs> that you were playing in a band with Steven Tucker a little bit uh, called Undercurrent or a project. What was that all about? Correct. Uh, me and Steve were uh, friends going uh, way back. Uh, he called me one day and uh, said that he needed a drummer. Uh, said that he needed a drummer for a metal project. He didn't specify anything. <laughs> I was kind of on a downtime in between my session work, and uh, so I went out there, stayed with him a couple of days, and it turns out that it was uh, hard rock, very Tool-inspired, uh, so to say, material. We, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised because I expected um, Morbid Angel. I don't know, another, <laughs> or, yeah, something along the lines of Morbid Angel. And um, and I was pleasantly surprised that it was not. It was at the key, you know, eight M's basically. And nothing really officially happened with that. Mm -hmm. We recorded a four-song demo, which I was uh, surprised how good it was. So I'm actually going to talk to Steve. Maybe uh, we'll we'll put it out one of these days. But it's definitely nothing that you would expect you know from somebody coming from Morbid Angel and <laughs> Orgasm <laughs> <laughs> so so Tom what was there anything else that we missed now leading up to Agony Climax I think like we're like right around the time when you started doing that well uh, right before Agony Climax there was another project <laughs> with Steve Tucker and uh, Jason Vibrooks of uh, Forbidden and Heathen, which was called Loa. Mm -hmm. They originally, uh, it was like a southern rock, um, again, non-metal, kind of heavy going into maybe little Pantera. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they recorded a five-song demo with a drummer, original drummer from Forbidden, and then I kind of stepped in and did. I haven't done any recordings with him, but played a couple of shows with him. Mm -hmm. We actually, one of the highlights of Loa was that we got to play in the intermission at a UFC fight. Oh, uh, cool. I forgot which one it was, but one of them. So that was pretty cool, you know, playing in between oh, the yeah. fights. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, so now tell us about. Agony Climax. I think we're all caught up to there. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> 2012, I did a fresh metal session uh, with a band, local band, Thruster. No, oh, mm hmm. And uh, that was a full length album uh, entitled Abysmal Fear, which was fun project to work on again it was thrash metal but i did a lot of death metal drumming over it so mm -hmm. it, it kind of mixed it up so it's you, you can you can say that it was pretty intense thrash metal with blast beats oh, there you go <laughs> and that puts us to agony climax okay and which was uh in 2013 mm -hmm. we got together with original members of Gorgasm, Tom Tangelos and Russ Powells. We always wanted to jam together. We've been talking about it for years. I actually, back in the uh, Bleeding Profusely days where Dave Kalras uh, used my drum set for that recording. Oh, cool. We sat down and me and Russ talked. Oh, it would be a very solid rhythm section if we jammed together. 
years went by, we never, you know, they left Gorgasm before I joined Gorgasm. And uh, in 2013 came the time we got together for a couple of months, wrote a full-length album, uh, which was supposed to be called The Final Moments of Suffering, and uh, put out uh, only one promo song, Displayed in Decay, in 2013. Never got to record a full-length album uh. due to some complications mm-hmm. of members moving out. Uh, that's too bad, because that, that was a good band there. Yeah, and it's uh, still in works. I recently talked with the bassist, and uh, we thought that, you know, we need to record this material because it would be a loss if it went to waste. I agree. So, Thomas, tell us a little bit now about Roads End. Now, this is a more hard rock project, but tell us who's in it and some of their former bands before you start telling us about it. Correct. Roads End is, uh, like you said, it's a it's a radio friendly. Mm-hmm. I want to say mainstream metal, mm-hmm. hard rock. Uh, uh, it was started by Nove, mm-hmm. a bass player of um, such bands such as Behemoth, Vader, uh, Desiree, and Devlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started with him uh, working on a studio album about three years ago, I believe, and um, they put it out, but the whole band disbanded because everybody was from different country, Um, and he approached me last year saying that he's interested in resurrecting it and actually getting a whole new lineup and writing new music. So we went ahead, hooked up, uh, and within, you know, two practices, we had three new songs written, so there was natural chemistry there right from the beginning. Soon after, a uh, band was joined on the, by guitarist Marco Martel, who previously uh, jammed in Malevolent Creation. Uh, so it, the, the whole band has kind of uh, extreme metal background, so mm-hmm. to say, but uh, but we make different music now. Mm-hmm. Uh, vocalist is uh, we found a great vocalist. His name's Sahar Tavo, and he was from a rock band, uh, Eyes of Fire, mm-hmm. and uh, another guy that just stepped in and perfect chemistry was there so a lot is happening with this we recently uh, recorded two more songs and going to be working on videos for that our previous single that uh, just came out officially is already getting radio plays Mm -hmm. on I believe like 14 different radio stations Mm -hmm. all over the country so uh, talking to some labels producers etc and uh future is looking so to say pretty bright with yeah. and our whole approach on it is to still uh make strong music that people will enjoy not cheesing out but for it to be radio friendly music absolutely and you know you're right because i've noticed as well that the band has been getting quite a bit of airplays on a, on a lot of popular stations, and you know you've been gathering quite a following. And you know I'm sure once you get all the label stuff taken care of, you guys will probably be going out, maybe doing some shows next year, maybe even the end of this year. Who knows? But uh, it's just interesting because the members come from such extreme metal backgrounds that it's the last thing that you would think that they would be doing but maybe not so much anymore because now you have freaking Nurgle doing country music and Dauber Beverly doing Oceans of Slumber from Insect Warfare so maybe it's not so far a stretch anymore you know but uh yes you're right this band is really seems to be taking off uh, that is the plan, and like you mentioned before, uh, you know, early next year, all the touring and all that good stuff will start, so 
we're looking forward to all the action that this band will bring. So now, moving all the way to the opposite spectrum of metal, if you will, you're also involved recently in a black metal project. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, correct. It's uh, the the band is called Mord Freisa, which uh, I believe in Swedish it means uh, Murder Frost. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically a two piece right now between me and this uh, my friend Chris. Chris wrote all the music, and he basically uh, asked me to go off and write some crazy drums to his music. So that's what we did we just did a three song EP one in a studio and his music is very um, so to say almost traditional black metal with uh, some very melodic elements Mm -hmm. and uh, he asked me to approach it slightly differently on drums and go a little more for that death metal feel instead of black metal so that's what I did, and uh, we were actually very stoked of the outcome, and uh, uh, hopefully very soon we'll get to share it with you and the rest of the world. Now you guys are playing like a debut debut show next month too with that too, right? October 1st. Oh my right. gosh, you got all kinds of shit going on. <laughs> Yeah, and then a couple of uh, rock shows in between that, you know, as you know, I do a lot of session work mm-hmm. for local bands, just filling in for shows and such. Mm-hmm. Now, Thomas, you mentioned earlier about some work you're doing with some overseas projects and stuff like that, so tell us about that. Correct. We, uh, thanks to the technology and the internet, uh, we are able to complete our uh, childhood dream project. Uh-huh. Uh, my uh, buddies from grammar school from Poland, and uh, the project is called Immense Grief. And I don't really know how to classify it. It's it's definitely metal, but it's uh, it's sort of death, black doom, folk with <laughs> elements of whatever. <laughs> So it's very interesting. I, uh, I again, we recorded three song EP, and it's being completed right now. I did my part here, and the tracks over there, and uh, I believe it's gonna be recorded and mixed in the famous uh, Hurt Studio. Oh, nice! Poland. So yeah, the production is gonna be uh, great, and I, again, I think it's uh, it's gonna be white spectrum of metal so i think a lot of people will dig it nice well we're looking forward to that too now what else you got going on is anything we missed in here well we kind of missed my uh sort of say baby project Mm -hmm. it's uh it's called 21 grams Mm -hmm. and i've been working on it for i want to say last 12 years wow and actually it's uh, right now, it's my one-man project. I write all the music and vocal arrangements, lyrics, all that good stuff, although I can't sing. <laughs> and uh, looking for the right vocalist for the last couple of years, so maybe one of these days I'll come across the right vocalist and get to record it all. But it, this is very inspired, anything from Pink Floyd to Opus to... Alice in Chains mm. with a couple of songs going off in the in kind of like industrially direction like Rammstein and you name it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my baby. Uh, I've put out uh, two demos, uh, self-recorded demos uh, entitled Side, uh, Sideshow Lullabies. Oh, nice. Now, Thomas, what kind of kit are you currently playing on? Currently, I am. I go and be, my main kit is a uh, Gratch USA Custom, mm-hmm. and uh, I use it for most of my recordings and live situations for anything from hard rock to extreme metal. Mm-hmm. And then I have a, a Jazzy Maple Premiere kit 
uh, just a traditional five piece, which I use for rock, blues, jazz, experimental, anything non metal. Mm hmm. Now I know there was a little point in time where you were almost going to get rid of the Gretsch. Uh, yes. <laughs> and currently, uh, I was uh, endorsing Gretsch back in the day, and I got to keep my beautiful drum set. So it's going to stay with me forever, but I'm Good. in talks with uh, a couple of companies such as Trick Drums and um, about endorsement deals. Oh, nice. So that's uh, soon to be announced on my website. Nice. Now, before we go, let's mention the show at the Empty Bottle again, put on by Sound Zero Productions, happening October 15th. The show features Malas, the human from Belgium, actually making their first U.S. appearance, Beget the Nephilim, Inner Decay, your band Corfugi, and your buddies from Poland, Squash Bowls. Now, is, this is a pretty big show, and I know the guys, the guys in uh, Squash Bowls are all excited. Now, are you guys going to hang out together, and are you going to like cook for them and shit when they get here? Of course. <laughs> How else could you could you picture that evening? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a fun evening with uh, lots of Polish food and uh, Polish beverages. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine. So uh, for that show, how how long is uh, Corfugi gonna be playing? Do you know how long your set is gonna be? I think we're shooting for about half an hour set. Mm -hmm. We want to make nice room for squash balls to entertain people. They don't get to. Uh, come here that often so about half an hour and you know also this is their first time in chicago right correct so that'll be fun for everybody and it's it's like you said it's going to be a big polish party going on there with all the food and drink and everything <laughs> oh yeah and uh, of course during the day probably before the show because who knows how we'll all <laughs> feel the day after the show right. but uh, we'll, we're going to take them around town you know show them around a bit so it'll be a fun time I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll enjoy it oh absolutely now do you have any other shows coming up now you have one with Mord and you have one with um, Corfugi is there anything else coming up you got going on Thomas I'm playing a show I believe it's uh next week with a uh, local rock band Rabbitus. Uh-huh. Um, I honestly forgot with all this stuff without looking at my cal show calendar. <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, it should be a pretty good show. I think it's a uh, hard rock cafe or something like that. Oh, nice. So, so Thomas, where can people go to to find out more of what you got going on? I know you have, you know, like a Facebook page and a website. Uh, most, uh, I, I would suggest going uh, to www.thomaspalasiewicz.com or my uh, music fa uh, Facebook page. And then those are the pages that you could find out what shows you're playing at, what band you're in now, any new projects and some news that's coming on. And uh, who, what, did, what did we skip? Paula Costume. Uh, it's a band from Indiana that I did uh, an album called uh, In Fields They In the Fields They Bled, which was put out in 2015. Ah. And uh, these guys recently hired me to record their next album, which is uh, the recording is going to start sometime this winter. And what kind of band is that? What kind of music is that? Uh, this is like old school black and death metal. Oh, cool. So we'll look forward to that, too. And what's the name of the band again? Holocaustum. Oh, yes. Okay, well, that'll be cool. So we're looking forward to that, too. So then on this yeah, is... And the uh, cool thing about Holocaustum is if you listen to it and, and if you don't know who's doing the vocals, it's uh, my good friend Shauna. That's the vocalist, and she can growl. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that too so okay Thomas now I think we really got everything covered 
I think so. <laughs> and thank you so much once again for taking the time out to do this with us here on the Metal Magdalene. And, and you know, all the best to you and, and all your projects. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. <laughs>